Sewing friends, welcome to Practical Stitches. My name is Sherry, and I have gone down the rabbit hole of coaching. And okay, my sister bought me these gloves quite a while ago, so that is coaching. It is has a design and yarns and cords all over the gloves and I really liked them and I thought it was an interesting technique and then um, I saw on Instagram or I saw it somewhere of this gentleman making a shirt and he did half of it was couching with big roses all over the shirt. It was beautiful. And then the pattern was on the other side. So if you've never heard tell of couching before, I'm going to read you the description right out of this Couture sewing book. It's an embroidery technique for securing cords, threads, or braids laid in decorative patterns on a fabric surface by sewing over them with fine, inconspicuous, or decorative thread. So, I don't have a coaching foot for my machine. So, I read somewhere that you can use your invisible zipper foot, but I found that did not work. I didn't, I tried it and I couldn't get the thread to catch, I'm using yarn, and I couldn't get the thread to catch the yarn and I didn't like the zigzag stitch. So this is my satin foot on my machine and there is a slight groove there and it seemed to work really well so and I also in my trying to figure out how to do this technique um, I uh, it said don't I don't think you're supposed to pull the yarn or your cord or you know there are all these rules anyway I found that you do have to put a little bit of tension on your yarn otherwise it rolls because it's round so and what and it said you're not supposed to back stitch now maybe that's if you use an embroidery maybe it's so your yarn doesn't get caught or whatever I don't know I did back stitch and not all the time but when I had to Anyway, so I had my dyed fabric, that, and so I did this design on there, which I think turned out awesome, and oh, did I ever have fun doing that. So I, this one side I did first. So this will be a bag, and I did it on purpose this way, because this is going to be the seam allowance. And then I did this side. I didn't want it to be right in the center, so I did do that on purpose. If you're wondering why it looks like it's cut off, it's because I did it that way. So how did I do it? Well, I just traced a quilt pattern and glued some paper together to make it thick. And I just randomly traced my shape onto the fabric. So then I took the yarn and sewed it on there. Now I quite like that. Now I always find you have to go one or two stitch more than you think you do to so you don't get this. But I quite like it. I'm very pleased with how this turned out even though my uh, Design is not symmetrical, but that's okay. 
So yeah, it turned out kind of fun. So this will be a tote bag or like a, a bag. Anyway, why did I pick this design to do this way? Well, because in this form, I'm going to need your help because I have two of these that I thought I would use. For strapping and this is like a thousand years old it has a Woolworths sticker on there <laughs> that's how old that is because I don't think they exist anymore so I'll hold this up so I have oh it's going around the wrong way I'll do one at a time so Should I use the red? I might have red yarn. So I'm just going to use that on the strap. I'll put uh, denim. I don't think I have enough. If I have enough of this fabric, I'll put that underneath. Like, reminds me of a guitar strap. So I just put that strap on the bag. So either this one. Or this one so those are not the same blues and I definitely don't have any purple or mauve yarn so there's that one or the red can I hold this up so you can see so the, so I just went downstairs and got this because I knew I had it and I thought it was more like a star. Anyway, I guess neither one of them really match. I'll have to see if I have any red yarn, but maybe this one. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let's see what it looks like with this one. I need your help. Let me decide which one I should use, or maybe I shouldn't use either one. But that was me practice. This was my practice run. Because when you see what I want to do, you're going to be, oh, that's going to look so cool. Now, so this fabric I've had forever, window pane fabric. And it's just a remnant. And I always, I seen it and thought, see, it's not very wide. And it was just a long strip. So, the fabric spoke to me and said, I want to be a tote bag. And I love black and white. So, I thought, okay, I'll make a tote bag. But then I didn't want it to be boring. <laughs> so the first thing I did was quilt it. I don't know if it's going to come up, but I quilted it with this thread. It's black and silver, which I don't think you're supposed to put through your sewing machine. And my sewing machine really hated it. So I just sewed on the lines and in person, it's very sparkly. Love it. Turned out awesome. My sewing machine let me do the back and the front of this tote bag. I cut it a little bit bigger. So and this is the I don't have very much fabric left, so it's just going to barely make this tote bag. So then I just thought, so then I needed a design. So I picked, I actually drew out a design and I, it was too small, which I will explain to you later. 
like the rose petals were too close together. So I just went to Google Images, coloring book pages of roses, and printed this one off. Perfect. So I thought, well, I better practice. And because this is black, like this here, I just used a erasable pen and drew my thing on there. So this is much more complicated. So I tried out some. So I have this yarn, which is very loopy. And there's two separate, well, I suppose there's three ways you could do it. So because this is black, so I thought, well, I'll try it with the paper. Getting the paper, as you can see, this is really close together. It's almost impossible. There's still paper in here. I can't get it out. So then I use the water-soluble interfacing. I cannot... So I drew on it with pen on the interfacing stuff, laid it over top, sewed over it, but I couldn't see what I was doing because you can see those designs are supposed to be the same. And I couldn't see what I was doing very well. So I'd have to use a different colored marker or something to make it bigger so I could see it. But I did, I liked sewing with the paper better, but it's really hard to get that out. So then I tried with some black, which you can't see the design black on black, obviously. And you pretty much have to go in there with tweezers to get the, it's really hard to get the paper. And this is like tissue paper. Let's see. So it's, so having really close together, when your pattern is really close together, it's very, this is working better, but with the fuzzy yarn, it's almost impossible because the, the more you rub it, the fuzzier the yarn gets. So, yeah. So obviously the black on black is not going to work. Or it's not the look that I'm going to like. So if I had, I suppose I could do a white yarn first and then a black yarn on top. That means I have to make another sample. <laughs> anyway, I think it would be better if I just if I bought a yarn that had some metallic in it, if one exists, of the one that I'm thinking. Anyway, probably does. I'd have to go to a store and find it, but yeah, that's incredibly It's coming out easier with this type yarn because this is just a flat yarn. Or a, I don't know. I'm not, but this here, it's impossible to, well, it's not impossible, but. So the best bet is probably to use the interfacing washable stuff. I just don't want to get my project all wet. I would just prefer to do it and then make the bag. So I like this yarn better. It's easier to work with. It's easier to catch it. And I don't know. I like the clean, cleaner look than the fuzzy fuzzy 
look. And see that got fuzzier me trying to, uh, yeah, see there's still paper stuck in here. And oh, yeah, it's hard to get out. So it's easier to get the paper out if I use this. So what yarn would you guys use on that? Obviously the black, it looks like it's showing up on camera, but in person it just, it disappears. And I think if I used a white thread, it would look weird. So, because, and I just use a straight stitch, by the way, and it stays on there. You can probably see on there, maybe not, straight stitches. So I don't think I'm in love with the fuzzy yarn. I need a yarn like this. Now I do have a white yarn. Maybe that's what I should do is to, I might try that. It's an idea. Okay. So now I'm going to show you my design. So I have it drawn on paper. And oh my gosh, that is going to, I think that is going to look awesome if I can find the right type of yarn. Or you don't have to use yarn, you can use ribbon or whatever. So is this a technique that you guys, or that any of you would try? I am having, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm not enjoying picking this paper out though, but <laughs> there's obviously a, different, a whole bunch of different ways to do a technique. And I would like to just draw on the fabric, but I don't have a, I have a colored pencil, but that's going to be hard because that is a lot of pattern to trace. I think it's going to look amazing on there. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. So I need to find something. Maybe I'll try doing white on top of this and see what it looks like. I might try that. But I did find it was easier to work with the paper for some reason than the interfacing stuff. Oh, I have it right here. So I did try and draw on it with a marker. But when you put it up against the black, it's still really hard to see. I find the paper so much easier. So, I don't know. Plus, I didn't like the feet. It feels like maybe I didn't wash it off well enough, but I don't like the feel of that. It's all crusty. Like it feels like somebody spilt pop all over it or something. It's like sugar. Maybe that's what it's made of. I don't know. Anyway, let me know which one I should use. And maybe... You all have an idea of what kind of thread, yarn, or maybe I should look for uh, some of that flat cording. Maybe that would look nice, which I don't have. So I'm going to have to go somewhere and buy something for that unless I think the black and white looks good. And I do use an embroidery thread to do this, but... It doesn't really sparkle through, so I don't know. Anyway, I'd highly recommend trying this. It's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. And take a, what could be a boring tote bag with the sparkles to something... I think that is going to be amazing. I can't wait to, uh, 
I just keep trying different things and then I get other ideas. So hopefully that inspires you to make something different that you never tried before. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you. You can join me Friday on my live. Have a great week. Bye.